Few things in life carry a greater sense of accomplishment than building a home with your own two hands. Add to that taking discarded materials and turning them into something beautiful and you have absolute perfection. And that is exactly what's happened with this next incredible tiny house that we're about to visit. Hi Lucilla, how are you? Hi Bryce, good you? Great to meet you. G'day Matthias, how's it going mate? Really good, welcome. Thank you very much, I'm really excited to be here and this is a beautiful home that you've built. <laughs> yeah, thank you. First of all, can you talk to me about what inspired you to build a tiny house? Yeah, well six years ago when we first arrived in New Zealand, we went to Waiheke Island and we met a lovely lady who had a tree house in her property. So we stayed there for four months and we realized that uh, we don't need much to live comfortably, especially if you have a beautiful view. And this is a beautiful parking spot. How did you come to be here? Well, the owner of the property works in the zoology department where I'm doing a PhD. And when he found out that we were building a tiny house, um, he told us that we could park it here. And this really is just such a cool spot. You've even got the alpacas sharing your space. Yes. It's great. <laughs> and some cows as well. And you built this tiny house as a DIY project. What was that like? Yeah, 100%. It was probably one of the best games I ever played. Wow, we ever played. It was a really nice experience. Yeah, and had you ever done a project like this before? Nothing like this, but I've done some carpentry in the past. Yeah, I've been working with tools all my life. I love the style of the home, matching the blue timber with the galvanized steel is very nice. Yeah, thank you very much. We used a lot of reclaimed materials. So yeah, the design adjusted to the money, the time and the resources that we yeah. had. And can you talk to me about the doors and windows? Because these are beautiful, but a lot of work to restore like this. Eh? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you the truth about these windows. We found it on a skip bin during the first lockdown. Actually, they were like six or seven. We were thinking, oh, what we can do? And we start matching up them. And I so, thought, well, this is gonna be the kitchen window. We joined it together. We used another one for the bathroom. And then we found the door on Marketplace. And we've been really, really lucky because when we went to buy it, the lady said, you can get it for free. Wow. Yeah. It never ceases to amaze me, some of the amazing things that you can find on the side of the road. Yeah, and that's incredible. Actually, I think I discovered like a natural instinct. Now I can be on the road and say, 100 mirrors, there is a skip bin. <laughs> <laughs> I especially like what you've done with the light over the door there. Yeah, I think that's something that happened not on purpose. We were hanging around one afternoon and I have these off cuts from a grill I made for some friends. And then we start playing on the deck, making shapes. And then we thought, oh, we need a lamp for, for the door. And the stool there, have you made that out of a river stone? Yeah, I, I've been thinking on doing stuff with natural materials for, for a while. I'm always thinking I have a pile of drawings. And one day I say, today is the day, I have to do it. I just love it. There's a business there making those, I'm sure of it. Yeah, one day it's gonna happen. It, yeah. It's on the list. So this parking spot, incredible location, gorgeous views but super high wind zone. So I'm so happy to see that you've got the tie downs for the house. Yeah, it was a priority. <laughs> the first thing we did when we moved the tiny house. And what size is the tiny house? So it's 6.6 .6 meters long, 2.5 wide and 4.15 high. And it's shorter than other tiny houses because we built it in a driveway and he built the trailer as well. And he needed a shelter space to protect the metal from the elements. So the garage from that house decided the dimensions of the house. So you even built the trailer for this. That takes some skill, dude. Yeah, it was a kind of a crazy idea, but I knew it from the beginning. I wanted to do it 100%. And it looks like you've built a bit of additional storage onto the exterior of the home as well. Yeah, yeah, it was really important for us having some extra storage for putting my tools, some camping and climbing gear. So because the tiny was 6.6, .6, and we wanted to have it like an extra space. We attach like another space on the end of the house. That allows us to have like a bench on the inside and some more extra storage on the outside. Yeah. yeah. 
already from the outside, this place just looks so cool. I love all of the creativity that's been poured into it, and I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Can we take a look? Yes, come in. Great, after you. This is absolutely stunning. You have done an incredible job on the interior of this house. Well, thank you very much. Immediately, I am completely struck with all of these gorgeous reclaimed timbers. Yeah, there is reclaimed timber everywhere. Every piece has a story, and I still remember where I picked them from. For example, this piece of wood. If you pay attention, it's gonna be all around. It was an old door we found on a skip bin. I remember coming back from the beach, see the skip bin, see the door, and I thought, I'm coming back. I went home, grabbed the car, and took the door. And since then I've been stripping and making pieces all around the house with this. This floor is absolutely gorgeous as well. There's just so much character in this. Yeah, it's something that we wanted to have like a reclaimed floor. And we didn't want it to have like a only single sheet of ply. Uh, so yeah, we, we've been searching for something like this for a long time. The timber you've used here as door trim is also just really unique, isn't it? Yeah, it is. We found it on a skip bin. At the beginning we thought, oh, probably it's not gonna be really good until we removed the, all the paint. And we found it, yes, this is a treasure. And again, in this room, I just love all of these really cool creative elements that you've brought into the space. Like these wonderful light fittings are just so unique. Yes, for example, this light was at an old tripod. We bought only the legs and I attached the three of them together. The same with these lamps. For example, we went one day hanging around on a second hand shop. We found these bottles. First thing that comes to my mind is, is a lamp. This is a lamp. I have this old copper pipe. And yeah, I thought I want to make a lamp to sit on top of our dinner space. And this lounge area here is just so cozy. Yes, it is. We use this couch a lot and it was in our previous house, so we didn't want to get rid of it. I especially like the feature window you've got there at the end of the lounge too. Yeah, we found it <laughs> at the very last minute. <laughs> Perfect. Great that you've got the wood stove in here as well. Dunedin gets pretty freezing, so that is an important item. Yeah, it gets warm easily. Also, having a tiny house, it's just easy. And it looks like you've built in a fold-up desk there as well. Yes, I work there. It's nice, and I have a beautiful view as well from that window. Very important. And PhD student, you've got a lot of desk work to be done. Yes, lots of writing. And the old painter's ladder that you use to access the loft is just really cool. That adds a lot of character. Yeah, it is beautiful. And we wanted to keep the couch. So yeah, a ladder was the option. And I've just noticed you've even created your own doorknobs using rocks. That is so cool. Yeah, we love natural materials, so it's a good option. Little things like that, you can't overstate how much of a difference it makes to the overall feeling of the space. Yeah, I think every time we were about to choose any part of the house, we were thinking as an industrial designer, or oh, I'm an design, industrial designer, how would I do not using standard materials? And then I went to on using, yeah, like a rock. <laughs> Love it. And this kitchen is beautifully done. Well, thank you very much. We really enjoy cooking and we wanted to have like a full-size stove and oven, full-size fridge with a freezer, big sink with a nice top. So it was yeah, probably one of our priorities. And being Argentinian, you are world famous for your love of food. <laughs> yeah, yes, food is a priority. We are thinking about food all day, all the time. Every single meal is important. My kind of country. Yeah. <laughs> the way that you've designed the kitchen is quite unique and very spatially efficient as well. I like the way that you've stepped out the stove to create a bit of room either side. Saving space is important and I think it's working pretty well. I think it works very well. And again, the cabinetry in here is beautifully built. Yeah, we, we kind of make it a match between wood and steel. It's pretty good. And it's all reclaimed materials. Yeah. And you can see that you have built in a lot of storage into quite a compact kitchen. Yeah, heaps of space. Beautiful window above the bench as well. Yes, well, we needed to get advantage of the view that we have. Yeah. It is beautiful having breakfast or dinner. It's like every afternoon or evening we, we're having a, a different scenery. Yeah. And when you think about what a beautiful timber window like this would cost to have made today, the fact that you just found that in a skip blows my mind. Well, yes, you can build a house with the 
things that you find in the skip. <laughs> you actually can. And it's a really unusual door that you've built for the bathroom too. Yeah, it's important having a nice door. So we've been thinking about how to bring it some character to the door. So I thought probably I can get a piece of MDF, like 9mm MDF, and make a kind of a clashing with old blinds, curtain huh. blinds. Building a bifold door like that is a really good, really spatially efficient option for if you can't put in a pocket door. So that is a really nice solution. Yeah, exactly. It is. Well, should we take a look in the bathroom? Yes. Please. Great. Come in. Again, this is exquisitely done. The way that you have just combined all of these really unique, beautiful reclaimed materials just adds so much character to the space. Yeah, the bathroom is a really important part of the house if you want to make it a homey place and not a cabin. So yeah, yeah it was really important for us. Beautiful tile work in here. Yes, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is important for us to have a nice bathroom and nice space. Definitely. The vanity is so unique. Yeah, actually it's really, really cheap. We found this one on a second hand shop. And this is again another piece of this door okay. we were talking about before. These are all off cats I found on the street. And we made a interesting basin. <laughs> you certainly have. And behind the curtain there, it looks like you've got a good sized shower. Yeah, it is like 900 by 700. Oh, beautiful copper work in the shower too. Yeah, we got it for free. <laughs> yeah, we can make a, an exchange. We went to this gathering and we saw these old pipes sitting on a side, ready to put on the skip bin. And I asked the guy to make an exchange with one of my rocks. And he said, you're more than welcome. Not only have rocks been used to beautify your house, you've also been able to use them as trade for materials. That is just so cool. Yeah, that's true. And then sleeping loft is upstairs. Yes. Cool, can we check it out? Yep, of course. The ladder's actually very comfortable to use, isn't it? Yes, it is. And this loft is completely charming. I especially love the window there. What a striking feature. We wanted a nice comfy space. And I guess this window was probably the only window that we bought. And it was the first one that we got. These side tables are so cool. They are my favorite ones so far. So that's why I keep it close to the bed. <laughs> yeah, very nice. The fact that you have poured love and attention to detail into everything that you've built in this home, it just shines through in everything. Well, thank you very much. I think it's in our instinct and it's part of our nature, what we like. All this is what represents us. Yeah. Really nice use of a chest of drawers up here. Yes, we have lots of storage space, so it's nice to have it here. Yeah, again, we got this one as a second hand. Actually, it was really ugly until we choose a color and paint it, and it's perfect size. It is a great fit. <laughs> and again, charming views from up here. Yeah, it's the best. During summer, we have the sunset straight over here. So sometimes we go to bed pretty early because we wake up early. And it's nice being here and having this orange light coming and every five minutes we are staring through the window. <laughs> Just magic. Beautiful flooring up here as well. Yes, it has the same materials as the bathroom uh, door. We had all these details everywhere in the house. And by using bits and pieces of all of these different reclaimed materials and repeating their use throughout the house, it helps to make everything feel really coherent and uniform. Exactly. Yeah, it ties everything in. It really does. It's a family. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you been living in the tiny house now? One year and a half. Great. And how are you finding tiny house life? Ah, the best experience ever. Yeah. Living in this house is amazing. And I think we say this every day, that our house is beautiful. Mm. And yeah, we are really, really happy. Especially with your design skills, we get to build and get to have a really nice, comfy home. I've been thinking for such a long time about doing this, and sometimes I don't realize what we've done. The day when we tow the tiny house into the place, it's like, wow, it's massive. It's massive. <laughs> that morning when we woke up for the first time, yeah, it was a great feeling. It was this dream is come through. And nowadays, I'm still 
living the dream. Every time I wake up, I'm surprised at where we are living and I'm always looking forward to come back to this place. It's a place we are always happy to come home to. And with this house, obviously you have done all of the labor yourself. You've found a lot of the materials that were used in the construction. Can we talk about the cost that was involved in building this? Yeah, it was under $30,000. The fact that you have built this quality of home for $30,000 completely blows my mind. And when you think that that is less than the average New Zealander pays in rent in a year, that really is remarkable. It just goes to show that if you are willing to put in the work, you can still make an affordable build happen. Absolutely. I'm convinced anyone can do it. And now the house is complete, what does the future hold for you both? Well, we just bought a bus, so we want to convert it into a house so we can travel around New Zealand. Two weeks ago, we went to Christchurch to bring it, and driving it here was the first step of this new adventure. What a cool idea. Well, you have done such an incredible job with the construction of this house. Looking around, I am completely awestruck with all of the beauty and art that you have been able to build into this space, utilizing reclaimed materials. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Mateus and Lucilla have done the most wonderful job building this home. It never ceases to amaze me some of the things that we just throw away in our culture today. And it makes me so happy that people like this exist who take these previously unloved items and turn them into something that's not only incredibly functional, like a home, but also incredibly beautiful.